What's up everyone and welcome to another Bitcoin market update. In these videos you will learn how to forecast price movements in your favorite cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and also see where we are looking to buy and sell these cryptocurrencies ourselves. So let's get into it here with Bitcoin on the monthly time frame, our good old friend Bitcoin. Uh, right now on the monthly time frame, same thing we've been talking about in the past few videos. Um, you know, the monthly time frame is, is looking pretty bearish. Um, the reason for that is because of the bearish spinning top candlestick here and then the increasing bear volume with the overbought condition here on the RSI, indicating that there's been a ton of buying but not much selling until this month where we've had a pretty significant amount of selling. So now we potentially will look to form a short-term high here and then go down and form a higher low somewhere above the 9,800 level. We'll need to break the low of the previous month of April here at about 47K for us to know that this high has been set. So let's go to the weekly time frame. When we're analyzing, when I'm analyzing time frames, what I'm doing is I'm trying to form a high time frame bias and say, Based on these high time frames, now I can look at the lower term time frames and analyze them and say, all right, based on the high time frames being either bearish or bullish, the lower term time frame entries that I should be looking for are going to have to be consistent with that. So if I think my high time frame bias is bullish, I'm going to be looking for bullish entries on the lower term time frames. And the converse is true if we're in a bearish situation on the high time frames, you're going to be looking for short entries on the shorter term time frames. So on the weekly time frame here, we have a weekly hidden bullish divergence here with a lower low in the RSI, but a higher low in price. Subsequently, we have pushed up since we made that uh, bullish divergence right here. We've pushed up a little bit, but subsequently this week, we, we haven't had much bullish follow through after we saw an increase in bull volume this last week. Now, we still do have majority of the week left to go, so it would not surprise me if we did end up uh, continuing to go higher up from here. If we do come down and we break the low of this previous week's uh, candle, which is at about 52.942 on this exchange, then we will look to try, if we're bullish, we're going to look to try and form a higher low somewhere above this one right here. And then we're going to try and see if we can change that weekly trend to be bullish, uh, which would give us probably the momentum we need to break above this key high. Um, it's less likely that we'll just break above this on on the first go from after hitting this low, but it is it is a possibility. So we're always trying to form, you know, the, the probabilities in our head, like how probable is this scenario, you know, and then you're making bets on that. So how probable is this scenario? And then you're saying, all right, I think this is very probable. So I'm going to put some money where my mouth is and bet on that scenario playing out versus a less probable scenario. You're probably going to wait to see some confirmation before you make uh, an entry. So now that we know where the weekly and the monthly stand, monthly is bearish, weekly the resistance level we're looking at is this R3 up here at 63.2, after that it's up here at about 80k. Um, let's go to the daily time frame. If we look at the daily time frame yesterday, we had a pretty significant dump and gave us our second test on our uh, dark blue support level here. So every time that a level gets tested, like we talk about in these videos, it gets weaker. So this level right here is getting weaker with each test of this, this level. Same thing on the, on the uh, resistance side. Every time that this gets tested, it's getting weaker as well. So this gray resistance zone is on the two-day time frame. And this is from back here on April 3rd. And you can see that we've tested this level now three times. So we had one test here two tests, three tests. So now every time we test this, like I said, it's getting weaker. So when we do eventually go above this zone, when we end up closing two two day candles uh, above this zone, it'll look something like this potentially, where we close two candles above, we come back into this level, we test this level, I will go long on here with my stop loss below the gray zone, and then we'll be targeting uh, new all-time highs. But until we get above that gray level, 
uh, it's very difficult in my head to be bullish because there's there's no established trend here. So if we look at the daily time frame, the trend we need to see is what we saw right here with a low, high, higher low, and then higher high. Subsequently, we've just had a bunch of chop. So there's not a lot to go off of here in terms of uh, the trend or the momentum carrying the price in one direction or the other. You can start looking at trend following indicators like the super guppy, for instance, and that does give you a better indication of, of where the momentum lies. Um, so when the super guppy, this is just a collection of moving averages. And so when the super guppy is in this position where the uh, faster EMAs are light blue and the slower EMAs are, are uh, green, that's the most bullish case scenario. And so every time the price dips into the green zone, that's a buying zone. You can see that that, that held there, held there, held there until eventually it did not hold. Now, as soon as it did not hold, then we start to see the EMAs flip to be gray. And they didn't quite turn bearish just yet. They didn't turn uh, over to being red, which is where you know that you know the price action is bearish and the momentum is, is going to push the price down. But they started to just flip gray, meaning that the faster EMAs started to flip below the uh, shorter, or I'm sorry, the longer EMAs, which are the green ones in this case. But now you can see that now the price kind of consolidated and recovered, and now the EMAs are flipping back to be green. So now this is really good. This is exactly what we want to see for a bull because we want to see the price bounce off of these green EMAs and then trend upwards from there. So if we go to like the 12-hour time frame, we can see that you know we had this period where we dipped down, the EMAs were gray, and then subsequently we had a recovery. We looked like we were about to go into a nice bull run, and then the price dipped down below the EMAs once again, and now we're operating below them. So we need to see a recovery where we're now operating above the EMAs again, where it looks like this, where the price action is above the green EMAs, and then we you know bounce off of those and we start to trend upwards. Until we get that, uh, it's it's difficult to be bullish right now because if we look at the lower term time frames like the four hour, the four hour time frame just printed a new resistance level. Sorry, I keep accidentally clicking that um, right here. So if we're looking right here, this is where we had a bear trend. So we had a high, low, lower high, and then lower low with at least two candle closes below this low of the white candle. So we can take our rectangle and draw that resistance zone there in yellow. We haven't came up and tested this level yet. Now, if we're a bull, the best case scenario here is we, we already formed a low high, and now we're trying to form a higher low. If we can come up and form a higher high above this key high with two candle closes above it, that'll make this support. Um, or even better, the best case scenario, you know, even if we were just to try and change a trend, that would obviously be good. But the best case scenario is we just go up from here and we close two candlesticks above this yellow zone. And then this turns into a strong support zone that we can then long to uh, look to go for new highs. Above this yellow zone, we have this other yellow four-hour resistance zone from back here when we had the, the bear trend with our high, low, lower high, and then lower low. So that zone you can see already held a couple times. Like uh, I think this is two times. It's, it's only actually touched it right here and right here. So that's two tests of that zone. So it's, it's weakening um, every time we test it. And so if we get above this yellow zone, a retest of this likely will take us through that yellow zone. So this is going to be the main zone to watch now, uh, in my opinion, and the four hour trend that develops uh, on this uh, time frame. If we pull up quickly the Ichimoku cloud, we can see that the cloud, if the price can reclaim uh, the uh, area above the Tenkin and the Kijun, the blue and the red line, 
then that would be we'd be in the most bullish scenario for this indicator. The cloud would be green, the price action would be above the Tenkin and the Kijun, and the Tenkin and the blue line would be above the Kijun, the red line. And that would look like this right here. So once this scenario becomes valid right here, the Tenkin crosses above the Kijun, boom, we get a nice run up right here. So this is this is very clearly forecasted by the uh, Ichimoku cloud indicator as soon as this becomes valid the price you know starts to rise and so if you're looking at this um, over here what you're looking for is the price eventually to go above the Tenkin and the Kijun once again and reclaim a bullish trend which is that low high higher low and then higher high pattern if we can get that then we're in really good shape um, and those are the key levels I'm looking for. This four hour level goes from about 56.7 up to about 58.6. So it's a pretty large four hour resistance zone. Um, so the other thing to note about this is the pivot level, the hourly pivot is inside of there as well. So it is probably more than likely that we will reject off of this zone in the first test. But like I said, best case scenario for the bulls is if we could just go right through this and then close above it, that would be uh, very bullish. So we'll see what we end up getting here um, over the coming hours and days. That's all I got for this one, guys. If you like this video, give it a like down below and subscribe for future educational content around cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. And if you haven't already, check out our beginner tactical analysis course that we just released on lutheria.com, where you can learn all the fundamental elements of tactical analysis, such as volume analysis, trend trading, uh, bulls versus bears, um, and a ton of other stuff as well. And so check that out. We're currently running a 20% off discount through May 20th. Um, and so, yeah, check it out and get started learning the fundamentals so then you can get started generating consistent income trading cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin like we talk about in these daily videos. So until next time, onward and upward.